Welcome to The Social Podcast, where no discussion or debate is off limits. So joining us today is Virgin Radio morning host Deepa Prashad. Super Swifty fan, Carly Thorne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna dive right in with this. It is Taylor Swift's world, and we are just living in it. So the Globe and Mail <laughs> published a, a, a Tay to Z, Z, Z Tay to Z glossary <laughs> uh, to help if you're feeling a little overwhelmed by all the hype, and you might need a bit of a starter pack. So this made us think, like, does the amount of sort of lore? Taylor lore kind of overwhelm you, or are you totally into this Is it part appeal? Of, Is it yeah. part of the appeal? Yeah. Oh my God. What do you think? Um, I mean, I made a YouTube video trying to encapsulate, this was like a year and a half ago, all of the lore, and it is an hour long. <laughs> <laughs> your, 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 your video is an hour long? My video is an hour long. Okay. Like, filming that video almost killed me. Like, it was, <laughs> it was like I was making my, like, gladiator or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it was tenuous, because there is so much, and there's more. Like, that was a surface level. <laughs> like, Swifties know you can have a PhD in her lore yeah. yes. and still know maybe 13%. Like, there's really no not a lot. Like, there's people that are like, well, her blood type is this. Yeah. <laughs> so but specific. in that community, do you guys get, like, you didn't know her blood type? Like, that kind of, so. or is this, like, beautiful? I think it's, like, a sharing learning experience. There's always going to be a couple people that really hold pride in the mm -hmm. knowledge they have, and that's their journey, and I support them on that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want them to be mean to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> but mostly it's just like a sharing of knowledge. I okay. think it's just fun to kind of let your freak flag fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Deepa, yeah. you I know are a fan, but like I don't think you're as deep into the lore maybe as Carly is. No, mm -hmm. I think when this was first announced and there was so much like franticness around her coming to the city, I was really annoyed. I was like, oh God, the city, the traffic's gonna suck. Everything's gonna suck. But yeah. now I'm like, this is such a historic moment for the city because I had never seen the city react to an artist the way that they have mm. with her. So yeah. I'm like, then I'm like, yeah, I love Taylor's world. Yeah. I love it's really Gosh. exciting. Yeah. Well, I just learned what the bracelets are. Oh, yeah. Yes. Did you guys know it comes from a line in one of her songs? You're on my own, kid. And the line is, so make the friendship bracelets. Take the moment and taste it. Yay. Oh. I think that's magical, and I support the community. Yes. You know I'll just say, what I admire about this and the, these extreme fandom is that it reminds me of the nerd world of sci-fi mm -hmm. and like for a long time that was just sort of relegated to one area and now it feels like in this fandom yeah. it's exactly the same thing like if you're a super hardcore sci-fi fan there are certain things you should all know like mm -hmm. one of them is that Tom Baker was the fourth doctor on Doctor Who okay they don't know that <laughs> another one is that C-3PO he can speak more than six million languages I knew that did you know that the T in James T. Kirk in Star Trek? He's t t t Tiberius. You got it! Yeah! <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, we've, yeah, we've shown our age. I think it's time to move on. Yeah, I had no idea what you guys were talking <laughs> about. She's like, blah, 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 blah. Don't know. <laughs> okay, so the London Free Press is reporting on how mothers and daughters have been bonding over Taylor's music and shows, if you think about it, for 18 years. Wow. That's really touching. Carly... What do you make of this bond? Well, I did this with my mom. I brought a picture. I made her search the depths of her Facebook oh. in 2012. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh. This is in 2012. We went to the Red oh, Tour on Mother's oh. Day together. Oh. I know. And she became a fan because I was a fan because she would drive me to school and I had the ox and I would just play Taylor Swift. Yeah. Um, there's another picture that's me at the 1989 tour with my cousins. My mom's taking the picture. I'm oh. trying to. Oh is that your cat? Is that Taylor's cat? That's, yeah, Taylor's cat. <laughs> that is giant. That's amazing. So, and like, I remember, I, I remember going to these concerts with my mom because they were like the first big concert we got to go to together. We would know all the words to the songs. Like, it's really beautiful to like share that, like share an adult activity yeah. with your yeah. parents. With yeah. your parents. And it's nice to go to Taylor because like we've all had that experience where you're watching a movie with your parent or you're watching a movie with your kid and then like, 
people start getting it on. Yeah. And, it's <laughs> yeah. and it's very PG. Like, she's not breaking it down in a really graphic way. Yeah. So you don't have to, like, avoid eye contact Good with your mother. Good for all ages. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you do this with your mom? Well, no, actually, I never bonded with, like, over any artist with my mom. But looking back at, like, your experience with mm -hmm. your mom, it is beautiful. But I'm thinking about it from a very practical perspective. If me and my mom like the same artist and we went to the concerts together, that means she would be paying for the ticket. <laughs> Do that with my mom? Yeah. Yeah. Did you mom do this just to you? Oh, no, I feel like I'm out of sync with my mom. She's light years ahead. So, like, <sighs> when I was growing up, she loved, like, Chris Christopherson and Bruce Springsteen, mm -hmm. which, who I, now I love both. And she watched, like, The Real Housewives decades before. And I used to kind of poo-poo it, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, hey, mom, <laughs> you're better than Real Housewives. Flash forward to my life now. <laughs> <laughs> So she's she's a tastemaker, Linda. Yeah, she I love really you. is. Yeah. She really tastemaker. is. Maker. I I definitely I want to take Jaya to concerts. He's not really into Taylor Swift, but I would take him if he was. I did, however, take my niece to Taylor Swift's concert when she was 12 years old, um, and it was uh, it was I actually got to meet Taylor, guys. <gasps> and I think we have a picture. This is a picture. <gasps> it looks like it's a cutout. I mean, I, this was an amazing experience. I feel like there is such, this is a different generational thing to be able to bring your nieces, your nephews, your, your children is a shift that didn't happen in the past. And I think it's just so lovely. Yeah. It's spreading joy and being able to celebrate all together. I love this story, but quickly, how tall is Taylor Swift? She's very tall. Do you know yes. this? Tall. She's tall. very tall. Six foot four. Great, okay. Uh, done, right. we're gonna say we'll that. that. No, okay. somebody's shaking their head. Somebody, somebody, somebody knows. Somebody in this knows. audience knows. We're gonna find oh, out. that Taylor is a tortured poet and has a great talent for writing timeless lyrics, but is she getting enough cred? Music journalist Rob Sheffield told Variety that people focus way too much on her boyfriends and not enough on her art. So has coverage been unfairly focused on Taylor's boyfriends over the years? Carly, I'll come to you. I think the answer is yes and no. Okay. I think that obviously, especially in the past, like people are obsessed with who she's dating. I think also just a lot of of times if a woman is in the public eye, they're like, but who is your man that keeps you? Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I also think we're interested in the people that inspire the art that we love. You yeah. know, like Picasso had muses and people have gone through and written novels and written books about the people that inspire the art that we love. So I think that it's a little bit, yes, of people are overly obsessed with her boyfriends, maybe because of the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. But I also think like, we do just, we're, we're interested in the people that inspire the artists that we love. Hmm, Isn't interesting. it also, like, hear me, I totally agree yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah. And this particular writer, he wants to place Taylor in sort of the pop music canon. Mm -hmm. He wants to shine a light on that, not necessarily on the celebrity and icons and the boyfriends and stuff like that, which I think is fair. But I do think, and more music writers should do that rather than just talking about the boyfriends, but I do think the boyfriends and the celebrity-ism feels like fair game because it's almost as though as though she's extended the invitation yes. herself. Totally. Mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, mm -hmm. isn't her entire career based off of making songs about love and breakups and all of those things? And as soon as she has a breakup, there's maybe a new album. So I feel like because yeah. of that, it's like, okay, there is an open invitation. And I do think, yeah, there's a lot of talk about the relationships and focus on that. But at the same time, I do feel, I work on radio. I feel like we do give her her accolades. She's a fantastic artist. She's an amazing songwriter, songwriter yeah, lyricist, yeah. performer. But at the same time, yeah, we do talk about all of I, the think, guy she's been I with. think people are partially also obsessed with it because people have grown up with her. And so it's like it mm -hmm. tracks your own relationship with love. Like right. I think people are so invested. First of all, a love song, in an instant, it can take you back in time to like a makeout session in the back of a car. Like we <laughs> all have this experience. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Right? It's all very potent. And I think that this. Also, the fandom, to go back to our first topic, is so intense. There's that parasocial relationship, oh, like the one-sided relationship where people yeah. feel deeply invested. Oh my God. Like, I feel like, I mean, maybe you would know more than mm -hmm. I would, but that like even some of her relationship decisions oh, have it, been influenced by the fandom. Well, it also feels really? like, it feels I like mean, your friend. Well, breakups, for sure, a little bit. Yeah, maybe. you know, when I think I'm speaking for a lot of people, like, it, it does feel like I'm watching a friend grow up. Like, when she started dating Maddie Healy, I was like, it's a canon event, I can't interfere. <laughs> Every single one of my friends will date a man like that. Oh like, a tattoo gosh. guy that, like, it's smokes things. cigarettes inside. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's true. A, it's, a, it's a rite of passage, That's you know? right, that's right. Um, but it it is, like, it, it we are 
locked in. I've yeah. sat front row with popcorn in my hand. I am obsessed. Yeah. I do think also, like, when you think about somebody like the Beatles, who are heavily, you know, they have a lot of accolades. Mm -hmm. We still also, like, know John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Absolutely. And Linda McCartney, yeah. all of these people. Patty Boyd, who inspired all of these songs. So I think as long as it's a part of the story of the music and not just making her removing like, the music like, yeah. from, from lavender haze when she's like people either want like they either want me to be a one night stand or a wife like she's a person yeah. who yeah. writes music yeah right. so exactly. I think as long as it's thought. within the music context i think it's fair game it is Loves fair it. Game. Yeah. 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 so taylor swift is about to wrap up the biggest grossing tour of all time right here in Canada. So we've all seen the headlines of the millions and billions of dollars made from the Eras Tour, but here to break down the Swiftonomics of it all is music journalist, Emily Hanscom. Emily, welcome back to the show. Okay, Emily, break it down for us. What exactly is Swiftonomics? So we know that Swifties are capable of causing the seismic activity of a 2.3 magnitude earthquake. <laughs> did that last year in Seattle, but their economic impact bears a lot of conversation as well. I mean, since launching this era's tour, it's the first tour to ever gross a billion dollars. The economic impact is so significant, we've got a term for it, it's Swiftonomics, we're gonna get into it today. Okay. Oh my goodness, well let's start with Taylor's personal information. How much money uh, is she taking home? Well, so she hasn't shown me her pay stuff, <laughs> but <laughs> Forbes recently placed her number two as the richest musician in the world. She is the number one richest female musician in the world. They estimate her net worth being at around $1.6 billion. Wow. And what I wanna add, the caveat, compared to a lot of other artists and musicians on that list, who have side businesses and that's where their riches come from. Taylor's worth and her financial accomplishments are from her music, her catalog, her streaming deals. So that's a very impressive fact. But also, Forbes estimated that her personal earnings from each one of these shows per night is between 10 and 13 million dollars. Wow. And I'll throw one more figure out there to get her eyes watering a little more. In revenue from merch alone last year, 200 million dollars. So she's doing pretty good. <laughs> okay, so when I hear these figures, I just think of the money that also fans are spending. Yeah. So how much of, is this tour setting people back? So it might surprise you. <laughs> it might surprise you to learn that the average Taylor Swift ticket price is $238. Doesn't really match with the prices we're kind of seeing online. That's because those are resale prices. She did not use dynamic pricing for the base level value. That's why that number is lower. Okay. For Canadians, though, when we talk about resale, it, the picture's not great. Ticket IQ found that for Canadian resale prices of these Vancouver Toronto dates, they're 225% higher than European dates. Oh. And that our average resale price on those websites is $6,351 oh. US. Wow. And I'm gonna throw one more stat at you that, that blew me away. So usually a concert goer, for every $100 you spend, there's about $300 that you're spending ancillary spending on, you know, travel, hotel. Right. For Swifties, that's $1,300 to $1,500 of side spending. Oh, so wow. it's no wonder local economies are getting such a boom, right? Okay. Oh my gosh, okay. well let's stick with this local economy boom because it's such a big boom that um, governments and cities are inviting Taylor, like, please come! Please come, because <laughs> it's boosting their economy so much. Justin Trudeau uh, did it. Yep. So how much of an impact is Taylor really having at a regional level? People think Taylor is gonna save us all. I think the best <laughs> way to illustrate this is with a few examples. So take LA, she had a six show run there. She is estimated to have increased their GDP of LA County by $320 million <gasps> and added 3,300 jobs as wow. well. The Illinois governor kind of credited her tour to reviving their tourism industry and more recently in New Orleans, there were three shows that are expected to have had an impact economically of $500 million. So wow. these, are, these are massive numbers. Okay, so how yeah. has the ERA's tour impacted businesses in particular? I love this because it's nice to remember that local international businesses are capitalizing off of this as well. So there's travel, for example. So there were no tour stops in New Zealand, but there were in Australia. So to get those Swifties back and forth, Air New Zealand had to add 2,000 seats. So there's some cash, for example. Wow. Okay. When it comes to those, you know, those friendship bracelets that you see being exchanged at the shows, very good time for jewelry, for jewelry shop, for jewelry merchants right now. Walmart Canada has confirmed that they've seen a 250% increase in their jewelry making kit sales. Oh wow! And ahead of the show tomorrow, Michaels, a craft store here, has seen a 300% increase. So it's amazing. Wow! But there's also these local businesses that we're seeing get really creative. You know, we're seeing. Taylor Swift themed ice cream. We're seeing sushi reputation rolls. We're seeing, 
We're seeing cat cafe parties. I mean, it's so nice to remember that, yes, there are these billionaires yeah, that are part of this equation, but also local businesses are cashing in. Good. So you've talked very eloquently about Taylor's uh, influence of economics around the world, but what do you think is going to happen to Toronto? So we are expecting on 240,000 concert goers coming through those shows. And in terms of money, we're expecting direct spending $152 million. That's just direct spending. And 93% of that is coming from people who are out of town coming to the city. But it doesn't end there. Even once Taylor N leaves the city, um, it's going to be a sad day, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're expecting overall $282 million of a swift economic impact here in Toronto. $40 million, which is going to be you know, things like tax revenue, going to be distributed across areas of government. So we can expect a good little boost here a as nice well. Boost. Even though it'll cost us, yeah. okay, it'll well, eclipse by the profits. Let's talk about that, though, because obviously it's exciting to have all these tourist dollars coming in, but that could also potentially drive prices up. So is it fair to say that Taylor maybe has inadvertently caused some inflation, too? Swiftflation, mm -hmm. maybe? Yeah. There are some, <laughs> some economists are saying that, like, in the UK, there were some economists who were attributing their flatlining 2% rate to Taylor Swift. I mean, these are very temporary dips, but if you're a Swifty in town, you're going to feel it. I just looked at hotels in this example. I looked at a hotel in the area near the arena, $1,100 a night. Wow. But if I looked one week later, post Taylor Swift era, it's going to be $225 for that same hotel room. Yeah. yeah. So this is a very real consequence for all of us here in the city. And that is why we're seeing fans in Vancouver and Toronto exchanging accommodation and tickets. They're trying to find a way around this, which I find a beautiful side of this expensive coin. I do yeah. too. I yeah. think it's really touching. But we have time for one last question. Uh, I imagine there are still some people who don't have a Taylor Swift ticket. Any words of advice? The FOMO is really strong right now. I don't know if, <laughs> if you feel it. I feel it. I think we all feel it across the country, not just Vancouver, Toronto. If you're going to try to get these last-minute tickets, and yes, there will be last-minute tickets, please just have a budget in mind before yeah. you go. Because you're going to get there. You know, the adrenaline's going to be pumping, and you think those ticket prices are going to drop. They're, they're going to stay pretty high. So just know what you want to spend and how much this is really worth to you because you're all going to the tailgate party. If you're at home, you can buy those tickets for $50. It's going to be an incredible experience. There are so many things going on in these cities around Taylor Swift that can help you enjoy the Swift mania even if you're not inside the arena. So don't let the FOMO take you out too much. This is a fun time for all of us. We can still enjoy. Great job. Oh, my goodness, you're wonderful. That was so good and so informative. That's Thank the you. pep talk I tell myself in yeah. the mirror. <laughs> Yourself. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, Emily, for being here. Subscribe to the social podcast so you don't miss a fiery debate. Until next time, socialites.